Hey, Jerome, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Um, looking back at, at, at film, how, how, uh, how would you evaluate how you guys played uh, last Friday at, at Cal? Um, I thought defensively we were very good the first 20 minutes, except for maybe the last possession of the first half. I thought we started the second half with some focus um, defensively, and then we got caught up playing the scoreboard. Um, offensively, we we got a ways to go. Um, just you know, understanding you know how to get shots and stuff. I thought there was a stretch there where we I didn't do a very good job uh, as a coach, and, uh, and Keontae went too long without touching the ball, and so we were able to rectify that one one little stretch um but the great thing about the other day is that we we scheduled the game so that we could go out there and play a tough close game and you know when um because it's our first time and it doesn't matter the opponent when you play somebody on their home court washington state goes to prairie view you know um arizona state goes goes to texas southern you know, um, Colorado went to Grambling. Like, I mean, when you play somebody on their home court, it, it's it's going to be, you're not sleeping in your own bed. They're going to have fans. You're uncomfortable. This stuff that comes up, right? And so to start the way we started, it was great, but it wasn't going to get what we wanted out of it. Now, I didn't want to go through giving up a 20-point lead, but doing that allowed to, us to see um, if we had the poise you know, to handle that run at us and then be able to respond. And so there was a lot of good things that came out of the game. And it seems like every game so far, including the, the exhibition versus Washburn, it's been kind of taking taking one step after another and playing for uh, the, the way that you want them to play for sustained periods of time, longer and longer. What's kind of that next step that you, you want them to hit uh, Thursday versus Kansas City? Uh, we just want to play a little bit longer focus together, you know, so I, I thought we put like 24, 25 minutes together, maybe uh, against um, Cal. And and if we can get to 26, 27, you know, where we're, we're really locked in and playing the right way, that'd be a good step. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tim. Next question to Alec from uh, EMOG. Hey, Coach, thanks for doing this. Um, I kind of wanted to ask about your signing class. You obviously signed three kids that I imagine you're pretty excited about. Can you just kind of take me through what went into signing those three kids? Well, man, our staff did an unbelievable job of um, identifying a young men that fit what we're about and also fit the need that we have. And uh, um Whenever you can sign three kids of that caliber in a short period of time, uh, like we did, uh, the hats off to our to our staff and um, and a big assist to our fans because every kid mentioned the love, support, and the attention and passion that they felt from our fans, um, and and it's a big part of why they chose to come to K State, and so. Um, you know, obviously, Dede and RJ are dynamic scores at the guard position. They can dribble past, shoot. They, you know, they're Big Twelve athletes. Um, I mean, they were they were they were sought after and blessed that we were able to um, develop early relationships with them even before we got here. That allowed their families, um, their dads in particular, uh, both of their dads are seniors. You know, uh, Robert and Darren and their dads to, to trust us to, to help continue to develop the young men that, that they've started with. And then uh, Michaela, man, uh, I watched Michaela while I was at Baylor uh, when he was a, like a freshman or a sophomore. And I remember seeing him play, but he was a little bit shorter and, you know, a little chubbier. And, uh, but I could, he had, he had a really good feel and knack. And I was like, man, that, that, that dude could play. And then I lost track of him, you know, and, uh, we were actually in Atlanta and somebody was at watching a Juco event and someone said, man, you need to see this kid to place for the Jets. And, uh, you know, we had two hours before our flight. So we drove an hour across town 
uh, to into a gym to watch one game, and it was Michaela Bridge, man, and and he was he was good. He can do so many things. He's uh, he can dribble, he can pass, he can shoot. He plays above the rim. Uh, he has a good feel for for the the game. And uh, man, when he grab, grabs a rebound, nobody's getting it from him, you know. And uh, just just love his competitiveness. And his best basketball is ahead of him. And so I, I, I'm really excited. Uh, they fit the needs of, of what, what we, what the things, some of the things that we're going to be lacking next year that with guys graduating and moving on, those guys are going to be able to step in and, and help us right away. With all three of those prospects that you signed, you said that all three of them can dribble, pass, and shoot. Can you just explain how important it is to be able to have a diverse skill set when you guys are going out and tracking kids on the trail? Yeah, you know, I mean, the game of basketball is getting to the point where it's positionless. And so you got to have dudes that can do multiple things. Um, there was a time when people wanted three and D guys and, you know, the whole, you know, trend was that. There was a time when people wanted a big center. There was a time, you know, there's now you just, you got to have multiple guys on the floor that can make plays for themselves and make plays for other people and um, and having guys who are weapons. Right. I, I think from uh, day one, those are guys who can step on the floor and on any given night, you know, they could they could get you 20, you know, because of their 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 ability to score the basketball. And so uh, I'm, I'm I'm excited for the growth that they're going to have while they're here. And then I guess one quick follow up that I have, this is your first class that you signed at Kansas State. Can you speak to what importance there is to signing a first class and how that Im impacts the culture you're trying to establish and all the different things that you're trying to make Kansas State basketball into? Well, I mean, I think we signed a pretty good class this summer, you know, with having to fill 11 uh, scholarships. And um, the thing about the guys that we signed this summer, they're, they're competitive kids who are winners and, you know, they love the game of basketball and, and they're guys that you don't mind, you know, being with away from the basketball court. And I think these three guys fit that same mold. So that, that's what we're going to have at Kansas State. We're going to have uh, great citizens who are super competitive winners and, you know, just, just going to love being a part of this community and this family. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Alex. And next, next question to Derek Young. Hey, Coach. Uh, Tyke Green's kind of been – you're almost go to score off the bench in the first two games. Is that kind of what you envisioned from him when you signed him? Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really have a, a vision for each kid. You know, the, 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 the goal was to get multiple guys here who could be weapons, you know, and, uh, and then figure out what, how they could best help us win games and we could best help them reach their goals and dreams. And so, um, you know, I'm I'm very happy with uh, how he's embraced where his role is right now. And, um, you know, I, I just don't want him to be satisfied. You know, uh, I like the competitiveness of these guys and and that they're going to keep trying to get a little bit more. And because of that, they're going to make each other better. Um, he was a big time score, you know, at Stony Brook. And so I, I expect as he continues to get comfortable and stuff that he's going to provide us some scoring even more and on the defensive end he's had quite a bit of an impact too right is that is that more about his length no, you know what he has really good instincts um especially off the ball right like I'd, I'd like him to be a little bit more aggressive on the ball you know play with his chest more and really impact the basketball more but um off the ball I feel like he's always in a stance and he's in the right position and he covers up mistakes then you signed R.J. Jones. I know you said he can do a little bit of everything, but is the shot making probably the number one attraction with him? I think with both of the guards, the shot making was the number one attraction. Because in this league, you know, we have such great coaches and great players that they, they're they going to take away your actions. They're going to know what you're running. And, uh, you know, it's going to come down to 10 seconds on the shot clock and you're going to need a player to go make a play. And that's the good thing about those guys is that you you got to guard them everywhere on the floor. Thanks. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Derek. Next question to uh, D. Scott. Bridget. 
Yeah. Hey coach, what, what do you feel like the team has done best over the first two games? Uh, competed, competed and started fast. You know, they've, they've looked excited to be on the basketball court, you know, and that that's the, you know, like they're not taking the opportunity for granted. And I, I really, I really enjoy that about them. What have you thought about the tempo so far? Uh, okay. Okay. I, you know, I, I'd like us to, you know, just continue, you know, like people talk about playing fast, but playing fast doesn't necessarily mean shooting fast. No. Um, it's just the, your movement, you know, like, like we can wear people down by cutting harder and, you know, just, just being more aggressive on everything. I thought Cal did a really good job in the second half of blowing up our cuts and pushing us off of screens and, you know, which bogs down the offense. Right. So um, I'd like, I'd like to see us just like run through contact and be just more aggressive in that area there. Okay. Thanks coach. Uh, next question to Kellis Robinette. Adrian, what would you say is your next uh, recruiting priority as you look a little bit more into the future? What's what are you hoping to add next? Man, that's good. Um, good question. Uh, I I think for this class for twenty three, you know, we're gonna probably well not probably we we will wait and sign some guys from the portal. Um, some older guys to go with these young talented guys and so that that would be that with 23 with 24 um, I, I think we can sign some more guys who are immediate impact guys uh, you know always trying to get a point guard in every class it's kind of like getting a quarterback in every class in football you know you want to get get a guy uh, a point guard and and just continuing to to bring weapons you know guys who if, if you have to guard all five guys on the floor then you know you're going to be a pretty good basketball team and it's when there are guys on the floor that don't have to be guarded that you have to like get tricky with your offense and all of that and so just just continuing to bring more weapons and you know just a higher level talent and uh with Keontae as he's easing back into action here for you guys I was just curious does he ever have any kind of minute count on him heading into these games no 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 minute count um just over the years, we found that guys are are more efficient um, when they play 32 or less minutes, and then when they get above 32 minutes, and just in our our analytics and our studies. And so, I try to I try not to get them above 32 or any of them above 32. Now there are going to be some times when that happens, but that that would be the the goal if they could be around 32 minutes. Okay, great. Thanks, Jerome. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, next question to Michael Goins from Go Powercat. Good afternoon, Coach. I appreciate your time. Um, what was your recruiting attraction to Desi Seals? Uh, his, he's a competitive winner. Two state championships in high school, right? Went undefeated his junior year and then repeated again his senior year. Uh, then goes to Arkansas and plays an elite eight, you know, so he, he's a winner and he's just really competitive. And everyone that we talked to about him uh, said that he just lives in the gym. And that's been my experience with him here. What is your week to week game to game aside from scoreboard kind of measurement for your basketball team? It's not week to week. It's it's day to day. Every day we're trying to get one percent better, you know. And and we evaluate: did we get better? And it's not just the day. It's like every segment of the day. So, did we have a one and zero lift? You know, did we have a one and zero? Uh, you know, practice. Did, did we have a one and zero film session? Did we have a one and zero? You know, did we have a break where they go to class? Did they? Did I mean? Did they? you know, take care of business in the classroom with Mary Claire, you know, are we going one and oh in every aspect of what we're doing? And if we do that, then we're going to get the 1% better that we want to get. And, and we'll, we'll stack days that way. And if you got any sort of uh, philosophy on in season tournaments, looking ahead to next week? Well, um, the hardest game to win is the first one. 
right? And so, you know, really have to prepare. Everybody's prepared, had time to prepare for. And so, you know, that that's always, you know, you got, got to get the first one. Then after that, it's just about how quickly can you recover and, you know, how much you can learn about the next team and, and you know, just move on. But um, for the most part, we will try and play in a Thanksgiving tournament. And so the guys can go home for Christmas. That's, that's going to be my philosophy. You want to stay in prime time, right? Uh, you know, it, it'd be. I like playing being in the islands, so <laughs> you're gonna notice we're gonna play in a bunch of islands. I, I, I like I like warm weather, and so, so that's <laughs> the thing. I think our fans will enjoy that too. I like it. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Uh, next question to Wyatt Thompson. Thank you. Coach, congratulations on the win at Cal. I guess uh, my question has to do with defense. Can you give me a little bit of an explanation of just from the principal standpoint, what you feel like maybe one or two things that you're doing really well this early? It's been impressive. Ooh. Um, oh, man, this is my weakness right here talking about what we're doing well now obviously I, I feel like we're locked into the scouting report our staff has done a great job of of laying out what the other team is going to do and our guys have done a great job of paying attention to the scouting report and so um there have been very few scouting report errors in that uh and then you know um our guys have done a good job of of flying around and just I think our length, our athleticism, uh, we, we've impacted the ball and caused teams to not be able to run their stuff. And now players have to make plays. I guess my second and final question is about Keese. And I, I'm, I noticed in the game where he was seven to two assist to turnover ratio and seemed to really have a little bit more control of that. How, how pleased are you by the progress that he has made in, in that way early on? Man, I, I'm I'm very pleased with Marquise. He's um he's really buying in to to what it's gonna take to help us to to win win. And um he's he's like he's he's constantly trying trying to trying to figure it out. And uh, you know, everybody's greatest strength is also their greatest weakness. And because he's fearless, his his fearlessness produces great plays but sometimes they get him in trouble and he's learning how to temper it on the other end and um he's just i mean he's a sponge he's really trying to soak things up and and figure out how to continue to get better and so yeah he's been he's been awesome thank you sir see you tomorrow thank you uh next question to cole carmody from go power cat Hey, Coach. Yeah, I, I just had a, a question. There was a, a video that surfaced on social media last weekend, uh, the Bill Snyder Award, um, of you kind of talking about that. I was just curious if you could kind of go into that and what went into that and, and how did you come up with that? Well, um, I watched uh, The Miracle in Manhattan and I'd never seen it. Somebody sent it to me and um, and so I watched it and I, was, I mean, I was blown away by Coach Snyder's um, selflessness, you know, when when a guy, you know, is, I mean, when the story about him going to give his paycheck and says, man, start, start digging in the ground or what do I need to do and, and not complaining. Like some dudes, sometimes people promise you things and then when it, they don't deliver, some people just use it as an excuse to not be successful. And Coach Snyder didn't use that as an excuse to not be successful. He was going to be successful. And his selflessness as a leader um, attracted other great people around him. I mean, you saw that staff that was there and some of the guys, when you start looking at some of the, the coaches that worked with him, you know, you, you can, you know, I mean, he just attracted great people around him. And, and so... So we wanted to give an award to the person, maybe, I, I bet Co if it was up to Coach Snyder, like he could be in a crowd and nobody recognize him and he would be very, very happy. I heard he always wore the the same pair of shoes, the white with the, the, the black swoosh, and he always wore a windbreaker. 
right? Like he's just, unless he had to wear a suit, he wore a suit. You know, just those, those characteristics of, of a leader that wants everybody else to get the attention, just goes about doing his thing on a, a daily basis. You know, we wanted to give an award to someone who other people may not have recognized it. It didn't show up in the stat sheet or whatever, but they contributed to us winning and moving forward and keeping guys, you know, just caring about other people. So it's really a, a selflessness uh, award. Um, and so, and you know, I, I, I just, I was just so in, in, impressed by it and moved by it. And I, and I want our guys, like anybody who comes through here to understand the history of Kansas state, not just the basketball program, but of Kansas state. And, um, you know, when a guy has his name on a stadium and is coaching games in the stadium with his name and his statue in front of it, and yet he doesn't want to be recognized, he wants to give everybody else the credit. I mean, there's so much you can learn from that person. And so uh, I'm, I'm just thankful to, to, to be able to, he wrote me some nice notes. He's, you know, been kind to me. I, I just, just to be around somebody that great, I, I, I just want to make sure that, that our guys understand what a special person he is. Appreciate it, coach. Looks like we have one more question from Alec. Thanks, Coach. I kind of wanted to uh, ask a little bit about going down to the Cayman Islands. I know you're kind of really focused on Kansas City, but as you kind of look forward, what kind of challenges or expectations do you have for the team going down there for really your first MTE as a head coach at K State? Um, I am focused on can't we we play a team tomorrow. Uh, that uh, is talented. Uh, Marvin Menzies is a terrific coach. He's going to have a game plan to give his guys a chance, the best chance to win the game. And and I, I man, other than the fact that I know that um, we got to drive to Kansas City to fly out because of customs, that's the only thing I've thought about with, with, with the Caymans. No problem. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. No Coach, I think that